Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and this is... Dr. Brent Bender, your Pennsylvania chiropractor. And this is... Bo Hightower. From? Oh, from New Mexico. From Albuquerque. And we all came together here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief today, and I adjusted these guys, examined them, and did their histories and everything right here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief. They got their very first ring dinger. So they are now the newest members, official members of Team Ring Dinger. There you go. We can put a reminder up there. On the team. Yeah, there you go. You're on the team, and <laughs> we up. got these shirts for you all, too. And if any of you chiropractors, anybody else is hating on this man, he's done a lot for the profession. He's one of the OGs. You need to learn some respect and stay in your place. Mm -hmm, true. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And we got polo shirt and t shirts for Dr. Bender. Soft, it's, comfy. Yeah, they are pretty comfy, but. You know, we've had our shirts all made up and everything. If you guys want some shirts, uh, go to advancedhoustonchiropractor.com and give us the contact information and your shirt size and everything. And then send us the money and we'll send them out to you. And I don't even know how much they cost. We'll have to get that figured once we get your orders in. I paid for them myself, but I don't know how much they cost. There you go. These guys get them for free because they're champions. And you know, I like hanging out with professionals like this because chiropractic is their true passion and that's what they encourage others to watch on their YouTube channels is the benefits of chiropractic care all over the globe. Isn't that correct? I think that's correct, 100% correct. Well, what would you like to say to our crack addict fans around the world? This is your video too. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we were discussing a lot of it earlier. I think that a lot of the, the conversation around this profession, um, it's a lot more nuanced than people act like. And of course, to get clicks on a video, it's one of those easy things you can do is to name call, you know, and I was I was discussing it with Splice earlier, and it's easy to call somebody, you know, specific names like uh, Charlatan, Quack, whatever you want to do, because there's, mm -hmm. there's no answer for that. Well, That's sort the of the anonymity of the internet. Well, huh? it's the professional equivalent of calling somebody a racist. There, there's no answering that. You can't prove that you're not. There's no way to prove that you're not. So, if you want to label somebody instead of talking about the merits of what's going on, it's easy to name call it and, and label, and or uh, make fun of. Right, or make fun of. And I think that a lot of times people get sort of things confused too, because as we were talking about earlier, chiropractors in general are healers, but there's a lot of different styles and techniques. You have your own technique. It's trademarked, obviously. So, right. don't be trying to do that, people. Um, yeah, don't do this at home. Unless you do, you know, unless you go to the course. Right? Unless you're a licensed chiropractor and take my seminar. There you go. But there's a lot of different treatment styles, and I think that sometimes the idea of what we're doing, the intervention versus the profession, is intentionally sleight of hand misconstrued to make it look worse. And they do the same thing. So when you have a lot of great outcomes, hundreds of thousands probably between the three of us, yep. um, those anecdotes don't count to those people. So they're like, oh, that's anecdotal, that doesn't count. Right. But when you have one case that hits a headline, somebody with you know negative, um, results or even potentially an injury, which does happen on an extremely rare occasion, then the anecdote matters. Mm -hmm. So somehow that gets misconstrued into thinking, what does the evidence say? And, and people's subjective experiences don't matter, which is a very slippery slope when we talk about pain, because pain is such a deeply personal a subjective experience. Too. And yeah. we're not measuring like we're measuring A1C or right. blood pressure. And so when people are critiquing this stuff, if, if people are saying they're getting better, I mean, I think that um, that's that's from the patients too. That's right. not from some third party who has no idea what you've just done. Right. So from a distance, when you've never experienced anything, it's very easy to be critical. So. Right. Right. Good point. Yeah. Statistically, we just have to look at it with the the prevalence of back pain and neck pain in this country. Nine out of ten people will experience low back pain at some point in their life. Headaches are up to sixty percent more frequent in females. Uh, neck pain also, and if you look at how chiropractic is grown in the evidence, and of course we're, there's still a lot of room for us yes. to grow, but if you look at how it's growing, we're seeing the efficacy of it, we're seeing the cost reduction, and uh, it's most it's most um, obvious within the insurance companies themselves right. paying for chiropractic care, because they see that the number one reason of lost work, of missed work, time yeah. out. So and, number uh, one cause of disability dollars in this country, 60 right. billion a year. Low back pain, so they investigate these things and in the studies that they produce have shown that chiropractic is the most effective. So it's only a matter of time before that continues to snowball and we start seeing chiropractic more integrated. And I know that both of you get um, referrals from 
surgeons and MDs yes. as I do in my practice, and it's because they're seeing the e efficacy of it. They're seeing the cost. First hand from it. their patients, who that's are right. also our patients. And that's right, yeah, they're going back to their doctor and saying that this is working, and, and it seems like we're all being more cohesive at this point. Right, and we so, should be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and what do you guys think about the scientific study that I just told you about today? It's really that exciting. We're doing, yeah. yeah. Johns Hopkins, Duke University, it's top-notch yeah. institutions for Harvard. research. It's all, it's all great stuff. And, you know, we encourage higher learning institutions and medical schools to do controlled, blinded studies on the efficacy of chiropractic care versus taking drugs or having injections or having surgeries and look at the outcomes short-term, mid-term, and long-term because that's what we're really talking about here is outcomes. Right. I mean, all of us treat patients every single day. Some really severe people come into our offices, as you've seen from our YouTube videos. Um, and, and we take a professional chiropractic approach to it scientifically in the art of the adjustment. Each of us has our own art of adjustments and that varies between chiropractor and chiropractor. Right. Um, so I don't judge his technique. He doesn't judge mine. I don't judge Dr. Bender's technique. He doesn't judge, although he did do a very nice review on mine. I keep <laughs> plugging that video because you were the only one that got it. Thank you. Yeah, it was really cool yeah. to have that. And I think he made a good point too, talking about the art, because this is one of the only professions where there's multimodal skill set differences. So there's intelligent differences from provider to provider, diagnostic differences. But when a medical doctor, for example, has a different diagnostic opinion, the actual other than surgeons, uh, like a primary, the skill isn't very much different. You can still write the same signature on a piece of paper. When you're talking about chiropractors, we're all built differently. There's a big skill difference mm -hmm. from one to another. So you wouldn't say, hey, anecdotally, I knew one person that got food poisoning at a restaurant, never eat at a restaurant again. Right. Or I had a bad haircut one time, all barbers are BS. Right. So right. I, I think it's important for people to recognize that, you know, there, there is an elite cream of the crop when it comes to any field both from an intellectual perspective and from a skill perspective. That's right. And particularly from a skill perspective, because yeah. this is manual work. And if you're not physically capable of doing it, sometimes that might look like something else. And sometimes the outcomes won't be the same either. It's, it's really kind of like a, a professional athlete is usually a gifted natural athlete sure. first and then gets superior training and education on how to become a pro athlete and then they increase their skills through training and education and, and, experience. and practice and experience that's yeah. right just like uh you know the the all pro nfl running back is a running back but so is a high school or jv level running back mm -hmm. but you wouldn't judge the efficacy of a running back based on the jv level mm -hmm. versus the pro you would acknowledge that there are skill level differences um, and there's a lot more nuance that goes into that. So, you know, there's two incredibly skilled chiropractors here in front of you that have years and years and years of experience. And, you know, a first or second year or somebody who hasn't been in practice for very, very long, we could assume that the skill level probably isn't there yet. Doesn't mean they won't grow into right. it, but if you have that bad experience, you need to think about these kind of things and say, hmm, maybe this person wasn't a good fit for me. Right. Maybe this technique wasn't a good fit for me. Right. Maybe if my orthotherapy technique isn't going great, they should try a ring dinger or they should come to Pennsylvania and, and get a, what, what was the uh, the other dinger? We call it a specific dinger, loosely. Specific, there loosely. you go. <laughs> you know? and, and, uh, it's a decompression. Yeah. And, and, he, and some of the, the traditional diversified stuff he did on me, you know, I haven't had that done in years. So, um, and, I've, and I've had plenty of bad adjustments too, whether it's yeah. in student clinic or, you know, when I live in Columbia or other places. So right. that skill level difference, you know, size difference from individual to individual. Obviously, a big guy like you is going to be able to adjust me pretty well. But if I have somebody who's 100 pounds, it may be a little more difficult. Yeah. Right. So getting the right patient with the right provider is one of the most important things, not only in chiropractic, but in medicine in general. In everything, really. I mean, just because you may have had a bad experience with a chiropractor at the joint, let's say, who doesn't even usually do exams and, and radiology or any kind of diagnostic testing, just because you had a bad experience at one chiropractor's office does not mean you should rule out chiropractic for your neuromusculoskeletal conditions. Yeah, they say once you've been into one chiropractic office, you've been into one chiropractic office and the right. differences are so varied. And so you guys probably get this a lot too, where people ask, is there anyone that you know that practices like you uh, 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 in wherever, in every Europe? Let me Multiple look at my role back yeah. So, um, uh, Joe, do you know an accountant in the <laughs> So, so for me, what, that's, what that says is when people are looking for practitioners is you really have to find the vibe. You know, it's you really have to go in and click with someone. You have to have that attraction to them. 
and, yeah. uh, and listen to your gut sense and go through the treatment and really be uh, self-aware in how you feel. Right. And, and also following recommendations helps too, having a good sense of, of what's probably um, of what's reasonable. You know, recommendations have to be reasonable, right. and you have to give someone a shot at what they do. And as long as they're coming, uh, as long as they're coming from a place of examination and history and experience, yes. and you trust that individual and you go through that, then it may work and it may not. But the point is, everything that we've been saying here is uh, is give it a try and keep moving forward with it, which is the importance of the YouTube channels. Is the well, we never promise. We never promise any of our patients a outcome because that's sure. impossible. You yeah. cannot. If you, if you go to any doctor, chiropractic or medical, and they promise you an outcome from the get-go, you need to run out of their office. Yeah. There was a prophet once, and he said, "Only sits speak in absolutes." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know everybody is individual. Everybody has their own unique anatomy physiology and and we have to be able to tune into that individual patient's human anatomy and physiology neurophysiology and detect and then correct the problems that they are having with their neuromusculoskeletal system in such a way as it improves the quality of their life through the treatment that we provide. Would you say that's fair? 100%. Yeah. And then refer out, if not. And have that's a right. team and have a network of people. You work with a team of doctors. I'm sure you know people around who yep. complement what we do. Absolutely. We're not here trying to say that this is the end all for everyone and just because you have a spine it's gonna work. It's not, it's not so, that's not what a good practitioner will do. Right. They'll try their best, and if not, they'll do their best to find you someone who can help. Right, and I think you know one of those things, people are like, how do you spot, spot a bad chiropractor? I said, well, how do you spot a bad lawyer? I mean, it's a little bit hard to do right off the bat, but here's some, some simple basics. If somebody's making claims that don't make biological sense to you and your spider sense is going off, that might not be a good fit for you. You know, if that person isn't willing to do a full examination and yes. not willing to look at your medical history, that might not be a great fit for you. Um, if for not, anyone, for that matter. For sure, and they don't, <laughs> they don't have a network to refer out. If this treatment isn't working, okay, this person has radiculopathy, we're going to give this intervention a shot. If yeah. it gets better, we'll acknowledge that. If it doesn't, well, maybe I can refer you over my friend's exactly. bio surgeon. Yeah. So those are some just basics um, that are, are things to look for when you're trying to judge if you're going to trust somebody with your spine. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and also do your research, read the reviews. From, from patients. The real reviews. The real reviews from patients that actually put their name by their review and not some troll who comes on there and leaves reviews as a job. Do you get Russian trolls? Uh, probably. We've got all kinds of trolls. <laughs> You'll probably see a lot of troll comments on this video even, but... We're ready for you. You know, that's, that's fine. You know, we have come together as professional chiropractors and we want to help this profession to into the next millennia become the primary portal of entry for most patients coming into the healthcare system. Because what we do, in, in my opinion, is healthcare. What's going on in the United States right now is mostly sick care with drugs and injections and surgeries. And, you know, chiropractic offers a whole different natural scientific approach that works. And I think people should, uh, open their minds and go try it out from, from one of your local chiropractors okay. who, who you've researched out and made sure it's a good person. A good rule of thumb also is to go to someone who is referred to you by one of your family members or friends or coworkers. Because sure. the biggest part of our practice is referrals. I'm sure you guys are saying so. Well, and, and like the Journal of the American Medical Associates stated, we need to try conservative therapies first. Right. And it's not just chiropractic. Chiropractic is one arm of that, too. Right. But, you know, acupuncture, massage, physical therapy. You know, you always want to start at these places before we start sticking needles in your body, right. before we start adjusting, you know, addictive pills and, and contributing to this opiate cri crisis. That's right. And it's not to say that those don't have their place, but, again, you should be talking to somebody who really knows the human body, who has a conservative approach and wants, you know, to keep you healthy without having to go that route. If you have to go there, then cool, but you don't want to jump into that immediately. And the opioid crisis is real. I mean, you guys know that from seeing patients come into your office. I mean, we have patients stumble in here their very first visit, and they've been in pain for the last 10 years, but they've been taking narcos or patches, you know, these fentanyl patches. I mean, heavy-duty uh, opioid drugs, and, and they get chemically dependent upon those drugs in a very short period of time. And then they have to have more and more and more of them because they get rebound pain. And, and so it is a real phenomenon. I mean, we see veterans in here all the time. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, we are the largest drugless natural 
profession for spine in the world. Wouldn't you agree with that 100%? Sure, and it's coming through with the opioid crisis. Actually, the executive order recently yes. passed allows chiropractic is now accessible in the VA. Yep. And acupuncture as well. And so it's, it's coming through. And these kinds of conversations, facilitating large audiences to understand that those kinds of things are coming through. And you know, if there's, if there's vets out there who didn't know that, you know, there's chiropractic care and acupuncture available at the VA. And so this is just the information area. We're making all this information accessible right now. Right. And even though that information can be disinformation sometimes, as you probably tell a lot of people as well, don't ever sit, don't ever consult Dr. Google because Dr. Google yes. oh, only man. has one answer for you. Well. But, uh, but there's so much disinformation uh, that, we, that is not often reliable. It's hard to sometimes come to a conclusion and a decision in what you're trying to do. And so right. these kinds of conversations, hopefully disseminating this information to say um, this is a balanced perspective right here sure. this is th these are professionals any professional whatever profession who's taking their time to listen to your symptoms who's taking their time to document medical history to go through examinations this is how you understand what and also educate healthcare. too in a, in a very professional and scientific manner as well yeah sometimes and and if you don't like that we got this for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and, and let's just let's clarify a couple of things too. I think a lot of questions come about this. So in the United States, and this is different in the UK, this is different in Europe, chiropractors are required to have a certain amount of undergraduate. Yeah. Most of us have bachelor's degrees going into it. You have to pass biology, chemistry one, two, you have to carry between a three and a three point six GPA, generally speaking. Yes. And it is a full doctoral program, a post bachelor doctoral program, four year program that is, is a very difficult course of curriculum. You have to pass four parts of the national boards. And you have to pass your jurisprudence for the state. So they, they are doctor degrees. There are some silly rumors acting like chiropractors, quote unquote, are doctors or don't have doctorates that anybody can do that. And that's just blatantly false. It's regulated by the, you know, the, the by government, each state, by each federal state. and state. Yep. Yep. And if, if you look at what you were talking about earlier, insurance isn't in the habit of just giving away money. So mm -hmm. the, the proof is in the eating of the pudding when it comes to this. Patients are, are clamoring for this care because they're getting good results with it. Right. Medicare covers it. It's in the VA hospital. Every professional football team has a chiropractor on board. Right. Um, when you're looking at this, this is a, a major staple. Uh, the VA incorporates it so that the veterans can get chiropractic care as well. This is the most regulated portion of the entire government when we're talking about Medicare. Right. So if there was no benefits for it, this wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. right. So again, the proof is there. It doesn't matter you know, which podcast host feels like they need to give their expert opinion on something. Uh, it doesn't matter how many you know British people with their own personal experiences with a profession that isn't licensed and regulated. And even when they discuss some of the adverse outcomes in some of these cases, I believe 75% of the quote unquote documented cases come from countries that don't have regulated chiropractors. Mm -hmm. So it's somebody calling themselves a chiropractor but haven't gotten their doctoral degree, right. haven't gone through the program, haven't done the licensing, haven't paid for the malpractice, haven't had to report to their board over and over again. And this is a very safe, regimented, studied profession that is is highly regulated at, at a federal level. Yeah, and also I think this, and, and you guys correct me if I'm out of turn, but I think I'm speaking for all of us in saying that when we do our YouTube videos on our patients, that is for educational purposes only, for the benefits of chiropractic care. We are not trying to teach you how to become a chiropractor and go out and start cracking on people's spines. Right. That's a serious business. Right, yeah. it's knowing what not to do that makes a good doctor, right? Yes. Anybody could give anybody opiates, but knowing who's susceptible, who's not. Same thing with chiropractic. Like, you know, the, the technique, you could learn that on your own, but you, you can't figure out the background and pathology and which patients might be highly susceptible to certain types of injuries, whether they have Marfans or rheumatoid arthritis. Right or some other country or atherosclerotic changes yeah. in your vasculature we don't we've turned away jeremy can tell you yeah there's many patients dozens that send away and dozens of patients who mm -hmm. this is not a good fit for because of their atherosclerotic changes or, or the under, underlying or, exactly or underlying disease processes that and, they have and why doc because you have a full doctoral level education on pathophysiology correct? To, to exactly mm -hmm. to make those discernible differential diagnoses right. yep so I, I just really appreciate these guys taking their time away from their practices and away from their states to come here to Houston and collaborate in these videos. And I want to thank them both very much, Dr. Bender, Dr. Hightower. It's been a real pleasure having y'all here. And the Super Cairo Friends Unite. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, there's, there's collaborative videos and then there's real collaborative chiropractic professional videos. And we hope this has been a 
professional educational experience for y'all. We love y'all and we encourage you to try chiropractic first uh, because it's, it's natural. They're not going to put anything into your body or take anything out of your body that wasn't meant to be there. So, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and this is... This is Bill Hightower. Go follow me. Check out the links. And this is... Brent Bender, still, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and we are coming to you from Advanced Chiropractic Relief in Houston, Texas. We'll see y'all soon. Home run.